Okay. Hey everyone, welcome back to our podcast series today. We're gonna get some really insightful information from Andres Abeta uh, and on why tech education is open to younger age groups. Welcome Andres, how are you doing? Hey, Rebecca, I'm great. Uh, good to be with you today. So Andres, I'm gonna get right into the video and ask you, what are the characteristics of Gen Z that impact their learning styles? Wow. There's so much there. Um, first thing I'll say is education has been the same for almost the history of time, from Abe Lincoln to sitting in a log cabin to probably you sitting in the four walls of a of a awesome. classroom with a person speaking to you, right? That's yeah. how you've learned. Um, yeah. But uh, especially due to COVID, there's been more change in educational delivery in the last five years than the prior history of time. That is because there's a lot of change needing to happen with both with technology and to your question, the younger audience, you know, what is it that you need and are um, expecting out of learning anything. So your Gen Z is the group that's completely grown up in the age of digital communications, your texting, your smartphones, your tablets, um, the internet, you, you've never known a time without it. <laughs> Um, so because of that, your age learns very quickly. You only want to do things real time. Um, if uh, uh, something's not available right now, you just don't wait for it. Um, you use all these digital tools, um, texting and the platforms like WhatsApp. Uh, so you're communicating back and forth, Zoom now for all of your web conferences and meetings, Google Meet, meetups. And then Google is your ubiquitous learning tool. You know, now uh -huh. I would have wanted to learn something. Would I rather choose Google uh, to be at my fingertips or 10, you know, super PhD wise men next to me? It's got to be Google. I often joke with my wife when we, I ask her a question and, and she gives me an answer that I kind of still don't believe. I say, well, why did I even ask you? I should have just looked at <laughs> Google in the first place because I'll believe that more than her. So that offends her, but you know, that's the, the Gen uh, Z in this group and timing that, uh, that you guys are part of. Yeah, absolutely. I grew up with computers too. And I can say that my whole life really does revolve around it. And especially during COVID, like I attended all of my classes online and it's kind of insane because my classroom is my living room and my bedroom. So quite funny. Um, I wanted to ask, why is there more competition for tech jobs? Well, the first thing is there's a lot more tech jobs. Um, in the United States, they say that there's probably four jobs in tech, like for developers, than for every developer that exists. And that's developers in a lot of different things, GIS, health, business. Um, but there's still competition for that. So with growing numbers of jobs, there's a growing number of people and there's a growing number of ways to access these people. So. Uh, you're competing for jobs now, not with people that can show up at an office. There's some limitation of wanting to live in an expensive area like San Francisco, because uh, not everybody can do that. But now with remote learning, that company in San Francisco and Silicon Valley can hire people in Albuquerque, New Mexico, if they wanted to, and maybe even pay less of a wage. So you're competing against all those people. Um, across the country and even beyond. Now there's um, gig economy platforms. Have you heard of Upwork and um, Fiverr? Have you? Uh, Fiverr, yeah, I've heard yeah. of it. So people can list themselves and be in uh, Bolivia. <laughs> I've hired a guy from uh, Bolivia to do something for me in the cloud that he gave great service right away and was probably a uh, 25% of the price of somebody who would have been here in California where I live. Um, so now I still rely on that person. Um, so those are some of the ways also COVID has really um, impacted how we are working very distributed in fashion and companies are some of them saying we're not going to go back to a centralized office and in a way that saves them money if they can get the right culture established for their organizations to lead people to work together remotely and 
we're getting lots of practice at, at that right now. Yeah, we definitely are. You talk about tech breaking the education by age paradigm. What do you mean by this? Yeah, that's a good question. So historically, um, we've learned things according to age. It doesn't matter how smart you are. You could be um, a lot smarter than all your other third grade kids, but you're still in that third grade class and you learn the same things because the teacher says that to everybody. You know, there have been cases where some prodigy gets ex uh, advanced a grade level, but it's pretty rare. Um, but in tech, you know, stuff right now is so available on the web, uh, you can learn lots of stuff. And I would say most of us would say the, the idea of coding, that's a pretty advanced skill. You can get a job on that. You can get paid $100,000 a year. <laughs> uh, that's, is that beyond me? Well, not according to commercial companies. Now you can see a plethora of coding, um, kids coding camps that are available at thousands of elementary schools all across the United States and across the, uh, the, the world. So if they're pushing coding skills down to that level, you can see that those kids in Gen Z are gonna come up and know coding without having to get a master's degree in computer science. Um, if they have the ambition and some support with their parents or siblings or of schools, they're gonna come away with knowing those skills in tech quite easily. So you can do that in cloud and um, AI is gonna be a big area, machine learning, data science, um, lots of tech areas that um, are pushing education downward so that kids at a younger age can learn whenever they want to. Yeah. What do you think um, parents think about their kids learning tech so early? <laughs> so let me ask you, what is your parents' main uh, motivation for sending you to college? Uh, so that I get a good job. <laughs> Sooner than later. <laughs> uh, I told my, my son who's in college, I say, uh, this is really important that you graduate in four years. When it took me five years to get my degree, the penalty was an extra year of time, but it probably cost me another $800 in tuition. That was it for a full year. Oh, wow. The penalty right now for you, if you take an extra year of time, could be $50,000 at a, a private school, right? And a year of time. So I don't want my son to uh, exposed me to that penalty. So I want him to graduate in four years. Yeah. Then um, not only graduating four years, but don't be unemployed for, you know, some long ex extended amount of time. So that means um, parents are really looking for programs, career paths that are going to get their kids em employed sooner than later and looking for a lot of these tech boot camps and um, classes that they can try to interest their kids at an earlier age. And if they do that, then they might find something that they really love and, and GIS could be one of those, you know, making maps and addressing world um, issues and being important in decision management. That's something that you could uh, easily see. That's um, something I'd invest in as a parent. Um, the other thing is that there's more high school kids in America than there are college kids. So that's a really big, big audience. And that should um, draw the interest of the commercial sector and the education sector to bring in more tech programs um, that expose GIS to, to kids at an earlier age. Yeah. As, as a company has done that very well, they've um, promoted GIS day, have a K through 12 program and support schools with uh, software. So there should be more of that. That's cool. Um, what are some of the learning options for kids nowadays? Well, right now, if uh, you go to any elementary school, I have a lot of experience with that to, with my kids. Um, they have after school enrichment programs. So that's where people in industry will come in and teach robotics or coding, chess, Spanish. Um, but if we talk about high school, because that's where the, the real focus starts with um, 
career paths, career topics. Um, that's where it's an enormous opportunity, um, but it's largely untapped. You have to have a parent that says, hey, I wanna have you uh, leave school and go to this um, robotics camp over the summer or find something online. So uh, the real opportunities, I think largely are driven by parents to go and find and look online and find um, learning opportunities in, in tech um, online. And if the uh, organizations that are doing this commercially expose that with some sensitivity to what the parents' needs are and maybe the, a little bit more of the simplicity and not having to explain everything at a really highly technical level. Yeah. And that's good for this audience. I, I have this great book somewhere on my bookshelf. It's called Don't Be Such a Scientist. I read it just cover to cover in like a week. And it says really the key thing in learning is um, try to explain things at a simpler level and more people will want to learn it and then act and be compelled to do things with that learning. If you try to make it more complex, then it distances you from the people that can enjoy that learning, that content and do something with it. So that's one of the philosophies we have. We try to make all of our content at uh, Bootcamp GIS uh, accessible to a high school student. And if that's the case, then we could turn them on, make them interested in our field of study and, and that could be their career path. And they'd know that early on as a high school student, instead of wandering around in, in college and you know, how long did it take you to kind of figure out what you want to do in college? Um, probably when I was in my sophomore year, I realized what I wanted to do with my life. But yeah, it does take people a while. Sometimes, actually, I had roommates. They didn't even know what they wanted to do when they graduated. <laughs> that, that would be painful as a parent. <laughs> some, some kids really don't know what they want to do in life. They just go to college and they're like, well, I guess I'm done with school. No, I don't know what to do with my life. It is hilarious. Well, thank you on this. I'm really glad to have this talk with you. I think many students um, and parents would find this information really helpful. And for anyone interested in Andres's company, it's called Bootcamp GIS. Um, it's a project-based learning company and you can check it out at www.bootcampgis.com. And there's some really cool stuff and courses that you can check out there. It will be linked in the description below for easy access. And also subscribe to our channel uh, if you're interested in our content. Thank you and have a good one. Yeah, thanks, Rebecca. Um, anybody that wants to call us and get just kind of a free discussion about what the uh, bootcamp can do for your child, we'd love to have that, that talk and learn about um, your and their needs and um, see if it's a fit for you. So uh, come and give a, a shout out to us and we'll, we'll talk. Thank you.